first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. It's really true. It's like the Spirit's just saying, try it out. Like, I've, I've got a whole new world for you, a whole, like the song says, a new fantastic point of view. <laughs> like the Aladdin song, a whole new world. And it's really that way. Um, but we, we don't experience it when we still think that we have to handle some aspects of our life. It's to the extent that we, we say, oh, Holy Spirit, I know you're not into finances, and Jesus, you've got many, too many important things to do with too many people to be, I'll deal with the checkbook, I'll deal with the finances, I'll deal with the jobs, I'll deal, uh, it's like, uh, we, we were just down in Florida, Jacksonville recently, and Helen and I met this man, and Helen and I went to his house because he had all this, paint, Jesus' presence with him so strong, and the paintings, and she was telling the story about how he was, he was going out walking. Dog loved to walk his dog, but he, his dog did doo doo, and so he, he's feeling this presence of Jesus, and he's like, "Hold on, Lord, just a minute here. I gotta pick up doo." And Jesus said to him, "I'll help you." Uh, See, that was a good example. We don't, he was like thinking, well, Jesus has got better things to do than be watching or picking up dog do. But Jesus said in him very clearly in presence, I'll help you. And that was shocked him a bit because he likes to keep some aspects of his life very personal, like picking up dog do, and then let the angels saying, oh, with all the other kind of things, like Bruce Almighty, you know, <laughs> something like that. But, but what we realize is the, the, the living demonstration in our life comes when we don't hold back anything from the light. The light is the presence that we are. It does, it does the seemingly mundane things, even though there's nothing mundane. Everything is precious. Every moment is precious. There, there aren't common things and extraordinary things. And we tend to think, even in terms of our decision making, there's like really important decisions where we need to pray for help on those. And then there's all these other mundane, everyday life decisions which, you know, we don't need any help. We can handle that just right. Except it gets into a mess. We get stressed out about those everyday decisions. So, um, uh, Helena's got a song called Decide For Me, which is really uh, calling on the Holy Spirit and saying, decide for me. Decide for me in all things. It's not like you have to be ritualistic about it, like, help me with this, help me with this, help me with that. Uh, it's when you get into the flow and the rhythm of it. Jesus says in the Course, when you have learned to decide with God, all decisions become as easy and as right as breathing. And it is as if you will be carried down a quiet path in summer. That's how our decision making can be when we put God first and we let the Spirit just pour through us and kind of go before us uh, like the lilies of the field. They you know, either, you know, was it toil or, or, spin. or spin? It'd be nice to be able to live a life without toiling and spinning. <laughs> He's the one who wasn't raised with the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The one who had no Christian upbringing. <laughs> no, yes, toil and spin. <laughs> That's the way that it works. <laughs> it pops through. But that's the beauty of it, you know, where you don't have to give conscious effort for it. It's more like opening up. When you clear your mind of the darkness, you can go on, we could say, Holy Spirit autopilot and, and experience a joyful. Day. Every day, that's God's will for us, is happiness and joy. Not sometimes, not part of the times, but all the time. So, we're here tonight, we're, we've got songs, they've got their guitars, the music's pouring through them, Helena's got her songs, and so we're, we're open also to any kind of um, topics or questions, because we're just an open book, you know, it's, for us this is just the way we live. So. Sometimes people will ask us about what do you do about this or this and this and that. Uh, just in, in living together, in relationships, in all those uh, kind of experiences, including quantum love, you know, that's, that's an amazing uh, experience because it's, it's not tied into persons. 
And so it it's, transcends this kind of personal need, I want, you know, trying to get things from people, which is so typical of human relationships, it really does transcend those. So does anybody have any talks? Yeah. Um, I just got a question. Um, I'll try to I'll try to do it justice. But um, when you know, I, I, I've been through the course with David, so I understand the language. But sometimes the language doesn't serve. In this instance, what I'm thinking about is when we, you know, you guys are talking about like um, that perfect day or that that with the Holy Spirit or with God, it still has that essence of something separate, you know, so how do you bridge that gap to where it's actually not anything separate, I mean, honestly, you know, it's, it's presence, so all that's really required is clearing to presence. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much describes our day, when we go out, we, we just pray that, that it, uh, the attitudes shine through us, and if there's words, so be it. But actually, words are but symbols of symbols, twice removed from reality. And, right. and I, I do a lot of talking, and I tell people, you really won't ever reach God through words. Mm -hmm. That even, God knows the prayer of our hearts before we utter a word. And so I find it's like, it's like a, a surrender, like, um, all of us really are into stillness and presence, that if you ask what's the most important thing, it's the presence. And um, it's not like we have like practices or rituals anymore. I started with the Course in Miracles back in 1986 and, and it served, but it was just the same thing you thought. It was like uh, there was a David and a Holy Spirit. And there was, even in prayer, it was an asking, a back and forth. And then that prayer without ceasing, you know, just started to come in stronger and stronger and stronger where, where there wasn't a question. Uh, so so when, you, when the questions leave, that's where it starts to become very consistent, the presence. Yeah, yeah, I mean you can say presence with uh, life, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, presence with not any life outside of your life, but presence in your life. Because even that starts opening up things that you weren't aware of in your own life that needed attention or, you know, required love. Yeah. Say presence with love. Yeah. yeah that's it. It's really, it, it, what words come yeah. to you yeah. is so beautiful. Because yeah. we, among ourselves, it comes out in different ways. And sometimes I'll give talks and it's all quantum. So it's it's all quantum physics. I can do the whole talk without mentioning God or Spirit or Holy Spirit or whatever. Sometimes it's through the music. I mean, it's amazing the music that pours through these three and people will just burst into tears. I mean, we started the Quantum Love Tour, I guess Helen and I were in San Rafael, California on the other coast. And then they came to Unity Village and and number of different stops and people were crying, you know, just touched by the music. Uh, one Course in Miracles facilitator down in Florida, he said, I, I don't even know if I want to go to like a public gathering on the course, it's a self-study book, it's what, why even go? He did come along and when he came up to me afterwards, his eyes were all sparkly and he went, I got two things from this gathering, movies and music. Because we have tools like the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, where we help people use the movies to train their mind to wake up to the spirit. Uh, the music just pours through has been very helpful for me in, in meditation and, and just being around it all. We have a music festival every year where we've got little coasters around there for the third annual uh, Strawberry Fields Forever Music Festival and Lightning Retreat. And we just come together in a big canyon in Utah, and people have all these songs of the Spirit pouring through them. Very wonderful, deep songs. And sometimes they actually sing. Uh, like our friend Eric got up there and he wanted to meditate. And uh, everybody, he's got such great songs. They're like, come on, Eric, sing. And he's like, nah. He just got up there and it was, it opened it up for all the other musicians, 
Everybody. He was practicing. He'd been quite intellectual, and he didn't want to. And he'd also had a musician's self-concept with pride. He was a very good singer and a good guitar player, and he didn't want that anymore. He didn't want to be that on the stage, and so he just decided that he would sit and he would wait until he felt the presence. And when he felt the presence move him, he would allow the music to come through from there. And he would, so he stopped and he, no. <laughs> 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 He was like, I won't move until it's moving through mm -hmm. me. And yeah, it was such a gift for everyone because everyone there is there to undo the self concept. We just want to authentically have the spirit come through us. And, and so we have expression sessions for the musicians every morning so they can come and share their fears and thoughts about performance. They want to clear all of that out of the way so when it's their turn, they can get up there and, and really have the experience for themselves. Yes. And after his performance, he said, oh my god, I can't be as bad as that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone laughs. All the musicians were like pros after that. <laughs> he can do that. I'm going to be great. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it comes through like uh, with the movies, you know, there's so many great movies. Now. Just this year, an amazing group of, of God movies is out. There's uh, movies like Transcendence with Johnny Depp, you know, more technological ones with consciousness. There's uh, watching this one called Mr. Nobody, which is really a really a quantum movie. I remember the first time I saw it, I was just like kind of dazed a little bit, and then when I went home, like a couple days later, the download started from this. And the spirit just was like informing me, watch this movie again, and here's gonna, you're going to see things you've never seen before. And you know how it is, when, when your mind's primed, you can see more, your perception can take in more of the vastness that's really there, and you're primed for it. So, we just use all kinds of music, and movies, and tools, angel baths, experiential things, anything that works to open the heart up, to, to feel that love and presence. She's like, quantum love now. I'm like, he's talking. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Quantum love. The Quantum Love Tour.
congregations, there's, you know, individual nuances, and I think we should do more of this and less of this. It's always differences. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the true spirit of forgiveness, you open to the sameness that transcends the differences. You, you absolutely get past this idea of specific beliefs. When I sit down, I mean, I've been traveling in, like, for about 27 years in about 31 countries, and so I, I'm on, you know, planes, trains, buses, out walking, airplanes, airports, rest stops. You know, I meet a lot of people, and it's really nice where you just have that humming presence within you, and you don't have to say anything. People can feel it. You know, we have revivals in Midas muffler shops, and uh, <laughs> Kirsten and I, one time, we came to, I think it was a McDonald's here in North Carolina. We walked into the McDonald's, and the, the man behind the counter, when we walked up to order, he went, Ooh, I could feel you coming <laughs> 20 feet away. He said, you can't I could feel the love, he said. <laughs> McDonald's in North Carolina. <laughs> it just really radiates, undefined, and then the characters come out everywhere. Uh, you know, they, the animals will come up, look you in the eye. We have a lot of, of animals out at this. Uh, we have the first Course in Miracles monastery in the world, but it's out way out. And so there's bobcats and deer and cows and like rams. And I mean, all kinds of animals, squirrels, chipmunks, cats, everything. And, and they're just like reflections, like chipmunks that will... We had a, for, it seems like for two or three years, we had a blind chipmunk. Stevie. Uh, Stevie. We called it Stevie, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> she just got it. <laughs> she, she, got it. <laughs> she knew Stevie, but she didn't know this, where it came from. <laughs> but he's like coming around and uh, just so friendly, come right up to you. But he, he, he just moved by sound, you know. But we had some that would come right up on our legs. It was more like St. Francis. Because the animals, when you don't have any fear, mm -hmm. then they feel the, the field. They feel the merge, They're like, oh yeah, you're one of us, and, and you just come, come right up, and there's, without the fear. And that, those are all just symbols, really, of what this is all about, you know. We, we want that with everything and everyone. We aren't looking to focus on differences of, of any kind. It's it. It's it. And my experience of like coming into that, there's a lot of reverb. <laughs> like I'm in a cave. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been about washing the belief in an external world. Mm -hmm. Really washing away that belief that there's someone outside of me that is going to judge me or that I need to do something for. You know, and I. I noticed how addicted I was to thinking for others and thinking for an external world, like I better do this for them, or I better, yeah, they need to know I love me, I love them. So it was constantly acting and speaking for the external. And and what's washed that away is just this devotion to, to pray, listen, follow. Just very simple, pray, listen, follow, and that guidance of the Spirit um, is what's coming from within, or it's coming from another source. It's, it's coming from a reference point that's not the external world. And as I've done that, just devoted to listening and following from this reference point, um, it's just turned everything around to this merge where I am that, I am that presence, I am that source, I am that spirit that's coming from God and extending outwards, rather than I'm a separate person trying to act and react and get it right in the world. So, and that's really what it's, what it's all about, it's just this washing away of a separate self, washing away of a self-concept that, um, 
yeah, is born of feeling separate and, and independent and instead just turning our attention, our full attention and devotion to that connection. And that's where the safety lies, and that's where the love lies, and that's where the answer to everything lies. And with that, we let go of needing and expecting anything from the world. No. It's like that, being sourced by that spirit and being directed by that spirit, means we're just no longer looking to the world to source us no. and to provide the safety or or anything. And yeah, so for me, something like music has been such a, a natural way of being in that presence. Um, and it was only yeah, a year and a half, a year ago or a year and a half ago, I was with a friend in Australia and having a very deep inward time and going through a real step in the way, letting go of responsibility in a big way. Responsibility for leadership, or being a counsellor, being a teacher, being in community, leading from anything, being anything. Mm -hmm. It was just time for me, just time for God, and to go through some deeper layers of letting go of specialness. And um, then I felt like extending. I could feel it, something I wanted to extend and be in the love, but I didn't feel to be talking to people. So the spirit said, oh, ask your friend for a guitar lesson. Mm -hmm. And one, he showed me one chord, and that was it. I just sat with my guitar happily for hours, just with one chord. Just <laughs> <laughs> and I'd been praying, and I had a song already written down from my prayer. And so he helped me with a little bit of rhythm to add to it, and it became a song, and it's all I wanted to hear. And so I would play that for hours and hours and hours and days and days, and then he, I prayed again, and and he showed me another chord. <laughs> <laughs> and another way of playing, and then I had my second song. And it's all been about this, just this connection with God. That's the only purpose. And yeah, eight months later, I, I came back over to the States and it was time for our festival, our strawberry festival. And by then I had um, six songs <laughs> <laughs> and about ten chords. And I found myself on the stage sharing this music. And it was recorded and then I had an album and then I was going on tour. <laughs> and it was just made me laugh, like every time I would be there playing a song, someone would say, oh, Kirsten's a musician, I just <laughs> it's like I'm really not. <laughs> yeah. It was just another way of seeing, like, the, you know, it's just about that prayer and asking and then the spirit. It's all about that relationship, like all God wants for us is for us to be in relationship with him, and truly all we want is to be in relationship with him. So it's just we keep aligning with that prayer. What is your will for me? You know, what would you have me do? And having the worthiness to keep asking and keep inviting and keep expecting to feel it and to hear it. <laughs>